This tutorial will cover the different file types in OrcaFlex as well as how to use workspaces to organize our, our screen and when we're viewing our model and our results. So first up, the uh, by the way I posted a link in the description below where you can download a PowerPoint. It's only five slides I believe and it's just pretty much in words I, I jotted down what the most uh, important points that, that I cover in this video that you can use to follow along. So first up, the OrcaFlex data file types. There are two of them. One is the binary data file, which has the .dat extension. And this is the most commonly used data file you'll, you'll be working with, and I recommend it because of the backward compatibility that it has with older versions of OrcaFlex. And also it gives you a, uh, a visual interface as you see here during your modeling process so you can actually see what you're doing. And uh, whereas the, uh, the second data file type is a text data file, which is a YAML file, which has the file extension of .yml. And in these text files, they contain only data that is inactive in the model, whereas the binary data will contain all active and inactive inactive data, which is another reason why I recommend the binary data files. Text files do come in handy when uh, you're making just minor changes, just changing one one or two parameters in your uh, in your file, or uh, they're also well suited for automation purposes when you get to that level for automating certain tasks or controlling analysis using uh, uh, script languages such as Python or MATLAB. And to show you an example of what a text data file or YAML file looks like, I'll just pull up, so I pretty much just saved this, the default file as a YAML file, and it will look like this in your directory. Uh, it will say, uh, that have the .yml extension. I need to change the name of those files. But this is what a YAML file it is. It'll just have the basic information about the program, the type of is a model, or the file uh, directory is, or the, uh, the path, when it was created, user, machine, etc. And, th and this is just where you have to set each parameter. And, it, and the order of, this, of setting these parameters actually is important. So close care needs to be taken when actually making a model with these uh, YAML files. But pretty much the syntax is just a name value pair. So the name here is unit system and it, the value is SI. So it's like that all the way down uh, through this entire file or whatever is in the model. And in that PowerPoint that I provided, I there's a few links. There's three links where you can, if you're interested more about what a YAML file is, you can go ahead and just click them and read a little bit more. And also, in the future, if you, once we start getting into automation, I recommend using the Sublime Text Editor, which I provided a link as well in the PowerPoint. So next up are simulation files. And those are created by, say, we just run statics up here which is this yellow arrow or we can hit F9 and that'll calculate statics for us and our status bar will say statics complete so if we do a save as if we save it right now it will be a a sim file but I'm going to just show you where this will be in file type, so binary data file. This should be sim file. We'll save that. So that's our simulation file in here. So this is where all your results will be stored uh, with either your statics or dynamics calculations or have been done. So the last calculated model state is saved. 
and we can use the OrcaFlex spreadsheet or manually pull out results uh, for whatever we're interested in for the objects that we actually have in our model. The simulation files can be generated by, like I said, after statics or dynamic calculation is performed and we save that file in the batch processing form, which is through the calculation menu and then we click batch processing. And this is where you just, you can run, depending on how many threads you have in your computer, you can run multiple cases at once and it will, this process will automatically save those sim files. And to set, just to show you something extra, if you go to tools and you go to set thread count, the first number you see is how many threads you have. So that's how many processors you have. So you can, I recommend lowering that number so you don't freeze up your computer when you actually are running batch processing. And to get an idea of what your, how fast your computer is, you can do calculate speed index. Just helpful tools that Orcaflex gives you to when you're running multiple cases at once. You can also generate simulation files using distributed Orcaflex, which is run off a server. And I'm not going to cover too much about that. And also the Orcaflex programming interface, which is you manually coding a, a model or running an analysis via script. Like you say, for example, in Python, you can save you can save a file after running sex or dynamics or just a dat file as well. But for instance, you'd have to run dynamics or statics first for the sim file. And next up are workspaces. These are really handy if you have uh, multiple views you want to look at with results and uh, spreadsheets where the values are or uh, graphs as well. For across multiple simulation files, all those work, that one workspace will transfer over so you can open up as long as all the data is the same and just to say the wave heading is different, uh, wave height or whatnot, you can look at how the results vary really quickly. So I'm just going to drop a line in there and just show you how you would set the workspace up. So I'm going to just I'm going to run a static so it's already there because so I'm going to pull up results as well. So we click this little eye here that will create another view. And to bring over, to see what that extra view I just made, we just have to click the, the minimize button or where it makes it smaller, half the size of the big screen. And I'm going to make one of these the picture view or shaded view by clicking or pressing Control G. And I will look at a result in the results tab. Let's just pick summary results, show that. And I'll look at a range graph. So this will give me the result along each node on the line. Show entire line. So this right here, if we want to look at this for multiple simulation files of the same type of model, to see how results are varying, we can go up here to Workspace and click Save Workspace, where it'll save it as a .wrk extension file. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that, preferably where you're actually working on all these sim files, so it's in the same location. So let me just close these. So I'll start over with just the first one. Control T to go back to normal. I guess that is our default view already. Okay, then go back up to workspace. The most recent ones are down here. You can access it again there, or you can go to open workspace. And you can also set, uh, let me open it first. Double click it and it'll preload everything. So since I have line one in here, a line that has line one, which was this guy, it's going to populate my results based on that because it's based on logical information already in your model. So if I want to set this as a default, you can do it here, or default for the folder is also helpful. Like I said, if you want to make this the same across all, all files you're working on. So that wraps up the uh, brief tutorial on file types and workspaces in Orcaflex. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below.
and I'll see you in the next tutorial.